In this video, we will learn how to use MongoDB with our programming language. So we will create a database, we will perform different operations in R, we will write different queries. And to use MongoDB with R, we will install a package named MongoLite. Before we begin with installation of MongoLite, let's start MongoDB and Robo3D. So we will create our database in uh, MongoDB and we will visualize our database in Robo3D and we will write queries and perform different operations in R. Uh, in the previous video, we learned how to download, install and configure MongoDB and we also explored a little bit of Robo3D. So if you haven't done that, you should see that video first before proceeding forward. Now let's start MongoDB. We also learned in the previous video that you have to go wherever you have installed your MongoDB. You have to go to that folder and then in the inside the MongoDB folder you have to uh, go till the bin folder. So this is the path that you have to go when you want to start your MongoDB and we will click on this file MongoD and we will run this file and our MongoDB will start. So it has successfully started. Let's open Robo3D. So this is the connection that we made last time to check. Let's delete it this time. And let's create a new connection. Uh, let's name it localhost for now. This is the default port of MongoDB 27017. Let's test this connection. Yes, it's connected. We're going to save it and we will connect it. And you can see it has appeared here. Now let's open our studio. To install the MongoLite package to use with R, uh, go to your console in R Studio and type install dot packages and type MongoLite. Press enter and the installation will begin. Alright, so it's installed successfully. Okay, before diving into the code, let's see a few things first. Let's look at three terminologies associated with no SQL databases before we move forward. So if you are familiar with SQL databases, for example, you must be aware that this is a table, right? So this is a table and these are the columns of the table. And for example, these are the rows or the table of the table. And we also sometimes call them as record one record or one row right okay uh, so when we talk about no sql databases this table is referred as a collection so table is you can think of table as a collection so we, we don't have tables there right we have collections instead and a record or a row is, you can think of it as a document. So there are no rows, rather there are several documents in the collection. And then when we talk about column, you can think of column as, we refer to it as a field. Right, so these three things, you should know these three things. Now let's create a new R script and create our database. First of all, we will import the library MongoLite. Then we will create our database instance Mongo. Here we have to provide it two things. The first argument is of the name of the collection that we want to put in the database at the start and the second argument is the URL of our database. So uh, first of all, let's 
let's say we want to name our collection let's say benders so this is from the avatar fire benders and water benders and so on so this is that benders this is just a name that i'm giving my collection nothing else you can you can name it on your own name you can do whatever you can write whatever you want right i'm just gonna name it benders and then we have to give it the url so there is a particular format of the url and it's like this mongo db colon double forward slashes and here we will write the ip the default ip so 0.0.1 then we'll write the port and port is the one um, that was present in uh, robo 3 t the default port of mongodb and it's actually let's see this is the port 27017 right so we will write 27017 and forward slash and then we have to write the name of the database that we want to create so you can name it anything i'm gonna put my name here. this is the name of my database you can write give it whatever name you want so this should create our uh, database right but to create the, the database you have to insert at least one document in it at the start otherwise it doesn't create it so to insert the document we will write m dollar insert and inside this function we will insert one we will insert different fields so let's say we want to name the fields as name i have to enclose it in quotation marks so name is ang let's enter this name first again i forgot to write quotation marks comma and let's say the second field second uh, column if you want to think of it like a structured database otherwise we should call it field so the second field is let's say jutsu jutsu and the jutsu is what's the jutsu of ang the avatar it was air right We'll close the curly braces, close the single quotation mark, and then this is the round bracket, closing round bracket. So this should create our database named this. It should have a collection named vendors, and it should have one document in it which with this, these fields. Right? Let's see what happens. Let's run this file. And let's see if our database is updated or not. refresh it and there we can see we have our first database you can open it you can open the collections and here we can see we have a collection named vendors you can open this collection and we can see there is a document inside this collection let's go with the um, doc and with the table view this is the table view so you can see the name as ang the jutsu as air this is what we wrote there you can also see it in the JSON notation. So this is uh, the JSON notation name and Jutsu. And this is actually the ID. It will be a unique ID. So tada, we have created our first database and our first collection as well as our first document. Now that we have done this, let's insert some more um, rows, rather some more documents in our database so I'm just gonna copy this and we will change it to Zuko is Jitsu was fire and then I'm gonna add Katara her Jutsu was water let's add Toph Jutsu was earth so uh, now let's source this file and see if all of these fields are added or not 
and obviously I I added this once so I think this should be added again right let's see all right let's refresh our database and open this collection again here we can see that those rows are added and obviously ang is added again because it was that script was run again and you can also see that in the json view right so now we have learned how to create and connect a database and how to insert different documents inside